we've, we've mentioned it a million times. We'll get to it now. We don't want to sensationalize this imaginary discussion, but I think we can't avoid it. Our friend Bill Eddingston wrote about it. People have talked about it. Urban Meyer's been asked about it. In 2015, what will the quarterback situation be? This is assuming, and we don't know this, that Braxton Miller is back and healthy. It, it, it's a long enough recovery time that I think that it's certainly possible that he's not doing much until camp next year, you know, that, that you really are going to have some uncertainty. But, Ari, if Braxton Miller is back and is physically ready to play, is there any question in your mind that he should be the starting quarterback, or there, is there something JT Barrett could do or has already done to cloud that picture and make you think that JT Barrett should be the quarterback. If Braxton Miller is what he was last year, and that's not saying he's, you know, we can't give him the benefit of the doubt that he's going to improve dramatically because he's not throwing. But if he could be the player that he was last year, you know, the guy that won the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year, mm -hmm. I personally have a hard time going against that. Now, we have a comment about the dilemma that that can create, and we'll get to it. But right now, I just believe that Braxton Miller, if they were on this, if he was on this team right now, they'd be undefeated and one of the favorites to go to the national championship game. The, the thing that, that people seem to like about JT Barrett the most is that he's making good decisions. He's getting the ball out. He's distributing. He's not throwing picks lately. Do you think if Braxton Miller was the quarterback right now, that most of those things would be happening with him too? Or are there things that JT Barrett is doing better than Braxton Miller would be doing? I think them? that there's this like weird obsession with Ohio State fans because it's been so long since they've had a player like JT, a quarterback, dating back to, I mean, Troy Smith was the perfect example of it in 06 of a precision pocket passer. And I think that that's kind of the vision of what they think JT might be able to be. But like, I think for whatever reason, Ohio State fans are sick of the Terrell Pryor model where it's a very freakishly good athlete who can root, run all over the place and do those things, but might not look pretty throwing the ball. And I think JT's looked pretty, pretty good throwing it with form and everything. And mm -hmm. I think there's a foundation there of like, well, if we just keep at it, this guy doesn't turn it over much. He has great form throwing it. He seems to make a good decision maker. If we continue to roll with him, then maybe this will manifest into a Troy Smith type of offense. And I think people miss that. But at the same time, if you have an established player that's as good as Braxton Miller, I just have a hard time not throwing out a guy that can win any game for you. Because I'm not sure JT can do that yet. Maybe he will next year. Maybe he will in the future. But I think people just are tired of the athlete at quarterback. I think they just want a real quarterback. But that doesn't mean it's better for what Ohio State wants to do. You know, I mean, we, again, all of this, is, it, I don't think any of this is a criticism of JT Barrett or not a criticism of Braxton Miller. No. If you have two good quarterbacks, I mean, it's the, what a great problem to have. I mean, it is interesting to think about that we live in a football world where the guy who won the Super Bowl, that quarterback, once basically was sort of told to leave his college because they were going to put in the next guy. You know, at NC State, they had Russell Wilson and Mike Glennon. Both of them are now starting quarterbacks in the NFL, but Russell Wilson moved on because... They sort of ready for the next guy. So, I mean, you never know 100% for sure how things are going to shake out. From what you've seen of JT this year, Bill, does he seem like a guy that, that you think would make a very good case to be the quarterback in 2015 no matter what? I think JT has been very good. I think better than I would say most people anticipate it after looking pretty shaky against Navy and very shaky against Virginia Tech. I think JT has come along very nicely. If he continues at the pace that he's at, I mean, we could be talking about a guy who finishes with 40 touchdown passes this year. Yeah, I mean, his stats are touchdowns. crazy yeah. right now. And if that, I mean, it's hard to overlook that. And I, I mean, I don't envy Ur Urban Meyer for having to make, uh, make a decision between a healthy Braxton Miller and JT Barrett. I think that JT can, can do more this season to put himself more in the conversation. I don't, th I, I think Urban Meyer is going to feel some kind of, uh, loyalty to Braxton Miller and, and feel like he's going to, Braxton Miller is going to at least get a shot to become the quarterback of this team again if he's healthy. Okay. Rapid fire. <laughs> no, uh, I, first of all, it's going to be interesting because it'll be two full years that Braxton has played in game almost and his recovery period is going to probably take him into fall camp. So I think that it's almost a long shot that he'll be completely ready and I think JT's going to get all the reps in the spring and that creates another aspect to it. But Here's kind of what I was talking about a little bit earlier, 
and I want to bring in a fan comment um, from uh, original or orange Brown fan. So he's seen a lot of great quarterback play over the years. So um, he, he read a, he said, we have seen an article early from this newspaper, which I wrote, that quoted Meyer saying Miller was the quarterback next year. Mm -hmm. And I think at that point, what else is he going to say? Of course, you know, he, but then, he, then uh, the comment continues and says, in the light of the way Barrett has been playing, if he keeps maturing, that's going to be a real issue. He has already established himself as a better passer which I think is an interesting point of view and a very common point of view. Is he a better passer? I don't know if that's the case. But I think Braxton probably has a better arm. A bigger arm. I think a it like, arm, looks yeah. nicer. I mean, but like yeah. the assertion that JT is already mm -hmm. a better passer than somebody who's been doing it for three years, I think is a little bit flawed. And I don't know why everybody thinks that, but they do. As he continues, the wide receivers and tight ends, despite their love for Miller, are going to, be like, are going to want to be with Barrett more because of the chemistry they've built. Miller only threw for 2,000 yards, 2, yards last season, not exactly eye-popping numbers. But here's the ongoing dilemma. It's a very, very informed comment. We appreciate it. If Meyer chooses Miller next year, not only does Barrett lose a productive season in the critical portion of his development, but all the future uh, top QBs that Ohio State's now recruiting are negatively affected by the succession chain. How is this issue resolved if they go back to Miller based on just the reaction that it might can, you know, make not only for the team, but for the guys we're trying to bring in? You know, I, I don't know that it changes that much because if Braxton Miller was healthy, the chain, the chain is very interesting. I think the chain is real. Yeah. I mean, you're the yeah, recruiting guy. The real. chain is real. We can't yeah. pretend that playing time and how many years you're going to get to play doesn't affect quarterback recruits. But the plan would have been Braxton Miller as the starter this year, JT Barrett sitting for a second year as a redshirt freshman, and then in 2015, JT Barrett would have Competing. been right there for the starting job with potentially the chance to start for three years, which is all you can ask for. He would have started as a third-year player, a redshirt sophomore, a fourth-year player, and a fifth-year player if he stuck around. What has changed is that you've just changed the order of that. So JT Barrett's getting his year now. Braxton Miller would come back next year, and JT Barrett would still have two more years after Braxton, and in the end have three years as the starter. I, and I don't think that... But that doesn't affect Joey Burrow. It doesn't affect Torrance Gibson. It doesn't affect Danny it, Clark. All that's the same. I think it does for this reason. Now, I know that the actual amount of years that you just said don't change at all. But a month and a half ago, JT Barrett was not what he is right now. And they didn't consider him a real, I think the thought process was Torrance Gibson was going to come in and start. So now you're. about that? I mean, I think that, I mean, I don't know. If, I think that. Without seeing JT Barrett perform, Ohio State now has to answer for that player. Where I think a top prospect is going to come in and say, well, Braxton's going to be a senior. The other kid hasn't played yet either. Mm -hmm. I can compete. Now that we've seen that JT Barrett is on pace for 40 touchdowns and is in the conversation and people think he's a better passer than Miller, now you have to explain to guys like Torrance Gibson, well, no matter what happens next year, it looks like JT Barrett's our guy for a longer period. Sometimes I think... But whether Miller or Barrett plays next year, does that affect that conversation? It's affecting it right now because who they're recruiting in 2015 now. What if they lose Torrance Gibson because JT Barrett has already set the foundation of the future when that didn't exist a month ago? Well, he's already said it. I mean, it's one of those things. It's like if your quarterbacks are so good, you can't get other quarterbacks. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's too many riches, right? But I mean, I, but I don't know why, whether Barrett or Miller plays next year, Barrett's not going anywhere. After that, I mean, potentially the way you look at it right now with how excited people are about JT Barrett, you would now anticipate that they are set for 2015, Miller or Barrett. They're set for 16, Barrett. They're set for 17, Barrett. And maybe 18, Ass Assuming depending. he comes back as a fifth-year senior. And then we're into Danny Clark, right, who's a 2017 recruit. I mean, you can play that game forever. There are a thousand things that can happen and will happen and can go wrong to, to deviate from that plan. But I just don't know that whether or not Miller or, or Barrett plays next year will affect that very much. No, I remember Meyer addressed, kind of addressed this, this issue on his radio show last week. He was, he was asked how having this situation with Braxton Miller and JT Barrett might affect future quarterback recruiting, and he did not seem very concerned about it at all. He seemed pretty confident in his ability and his coaching staff's ability to bring in quarterbacks regardless of what the, the landscape looks like at Ohio State. But the, I mean, you talk about Torrance Gibson, Ari, and you would have a better gauge of this probably than I do, but is, is the schools that Torrance Gibson is considering, is there anywhere that he could go that he would play earlier than he would play here at Ohio State? You know, 
I mean, I'd probably go to Arizona and play right away. That's one of them. I don't know uh, Oklahoma's quarterback's year off the top of my head, but he's pretty good, right? Um, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, Mississippi State's now in it. Um, I, I don't – it's not that – I think it's easier to convince a kid that they might be able to come in and get playing time when the person they're competing against isn't out there already. Yeah, yeah. So that's the only thing. I'm not saying Torrance Gibson's going to make his decision based on how well JT's playing, but in a recruit's mind, it's, well, there's going to be a new starter after this year. Right. And then I will have my chance to compete to start that year, whether it happens or not. But now if you're saying JT Barrett is going to be the starter in 2016 no matter what, that kind of changes the thinking a little bit. Oh, but, but I mean, he's going, but whether or not, no matter who the starter is in 2015, JT Barrett's the starter in 2016. But that wasn't necessarily a fact yeah. a month ago. Well, but I mean, but again, I mean, what a great, I mean, if that's your problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, mean, but yeah. That's, I mean, but but JT Barrett, again, let's not sell short JT Barrett. I mean, we wrote in our QB Quest series last week about quarterback recruiting. JT Barrett did not have the offer in state from Texas early that may have, made him stay in state, but he was, a, he was a highly ranked guy. This was a guy that Urban Meyer and Tom Herman sort of chose to go get him. He was a highly rated, you know, the first quarterback they recruited here. They like a lot about him. He had the ACL tear his senior year, which I think added some uncertainty to that situation. He's maybe not as, as flashy as some guys, but I think what he has been so far is what they thought he would be, and I think in their minds, they certainly thought this was a guy that could come in and be a multi-year starter at Ohio State. Maybe not play this well in this situation, but I don't know that anybody at Ohio State is surprised that JT Barrett was going to come in here and be a quarterback for a I while. I think the vision now is, is to get a guy like JT Barrett is reliable. Like we said, he doesn't turn the ball over, he makes good decisions, and he can let other people in the offense shine. And mm -hmm. I think as Ohio State continues to recruit the offensive approach the way they have, they should have a Dontre Wilson in every class, a Jalen Marshall in every class, an Ezekiel Elliott in every class. And when you start doing that, it makes the quarterback position. I mean, Urban, when we asked him about you know the quarterback position three weeks ago before the Cincinnati game, he said a quarterback is the product of what's around him. And I think if JT Barrett's already playing this well and Ohio State gains experience and stuff, I think he's going to be a very productive player. And I'll say, I think at times um, people may think that we have been beating the drum for Braxton and, and been unsure about JT I have never been unsure about JT Barrett as what JT Barrett's going to be in 2016, 2017. Yeah. I was unsure about JT Barrett being thrown in as the starter two weeks before a season as a redshirt freshman. You don't get it overnight. It takes time to develop. I think JT Barrett has every attribute by the time he's a third-year, fourth-year, fifth-year college player to be as good as basically any quarterback in the country. And it wasn't, and it wasn't anything against JT as much as it was a compliment to Braxton. I mean, this offense was running a certain way. And you can't for forget so how you good Braxton Yeah, it's like everybody's like, well, who's Braxton Miller? Oh, the two-time defending Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. I mean, the guy was ridiculous. So um, it's not that Ohio State is doomed because JT Barrett doesn't have the qualities to grow into a great player. And, you know, it, it was a, this is the issue. They just lost one of the best players in college football. It's simple. And, and frankly, with Braxton Miller, as we've learned, you, it's great to have a, a number two guy behind him that you can trust. I mean, every year... You know, Kenny Guyton got a lot of love in Columbus because he had opportunities to play because Braxton Miller got hurt. JT Barrett's gotten this chance. You know, if Braxton Miller comes back and you make him the starter in 2015, you have no idea how that season's going to unfold. Yeah, and yeah. guess what? If a worst-case scenario happens and Braxton Miller goes down for any reason, who's coming in? Your guy. The guy who started every game the year before. That's a pretty good situation. Yeah, I, I think it's a – it's. I said I, I don't envy Urban Meyer having to make the decision, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad position to be in. No, I think you have it's a choice a between position. perfect yeah. position. Yeah, the choice between two-time Big Ten Player of the Year or a guy who's clearly blossoming into a pretty well, good quarterback. Especially when you take into account that Braxton Miller, even before this, hasn't been healthy his entire career. He still has a rigorous recovery process to go through. He's going to enter fall camp, maybe coming off of that injury weeks before, so they're going to take it slow. I mean, they took it so slow this time, and. You know what I mean? Imagine how slow it's going to be next year. So I think it's going to be, uh, I, th I think expecting Braxton to be 100% ready to go and to be the Braxton of last year, next year is a stretch. I really do. I think that this is kind of an interesting topic. But I think if you look at just the history and the patterns and the way things are trending, I, I, I just think that it's kind of a stretch to think that it's all going to just pan out and Braxton's going to come it, in on a white horse with a sword, you know? And I, <laughs> I do think that if he does come in on a white horse with a sword and is completely healthy and is awesome, 
I would guess that Urban Meyer would find something to do that JT Barrett's not going to keep sit him involved on the bench a little bit, yeah, and not move for a 12-game regular season. You know, or I, vice versa. Could you do something with? I mean, everyone's obsessed with the idea of. I mean, I don't think it. I don't think it means you turn Braxton Miller into an H back. But like, if Braxton's a quarterback, and they're both on the field at the same time, I mean, there was like. It's like the Beckman Terrell Pryor days, you know, yeah. or like do something. If, if JT is a quarterback on a certain play, is there something else Braxton can do? I'm not saying change his position, but. Yes, here and there, so JT can yes. get cobwebs on him. And they both him. kind of feel like they're needed and wanted. Would yeah. you be shocked if, if Urban Meyer and Tom Herman no. came up with some kind of crazy thing to do on that? And I'd be shocked if they didn't. Put defenses yeah. on Too much heels. talent on the field, kind of like I this mean, room. It, it, <laughs> It, it's an interesting thing. We just spent a lot of time talking about 2015. I think it's an interesting sort of state of the program situation, and you cannot deny that this is an, in, it's an interesting topic for this team. Is it the number one thing facing this week? No. they got to go out and beat Rutgers. they got to go out and beat Penn State and then beat Illinois and lead up to Michigan State. But, you know, it, it, as much as that early loss did change things, they're in a very interesting spot right now. They are in a very interesting spot, and I think that it's it's a. I, I think that Ohio State fans have reason to be kind of excited about the future of this team. Maybe not necessarily this year, right? Which is interesting because last year, after everything was so perfect for two years, right? When they lost to Michigan State, it was like the world fell off. You know, like everything that they had built, right? Uh, kind of seemed like it crumbled, and then when Braxton got hurt, it just seemed like there was so much negative momentum around the program. Right. So, I mean, a month of winning and maybe discovering that you might have the quarterback of the future already in hand mm-hmm. kind of makes it a little bit better when you think about the youth around him, too. You know, I, thought, I said when the Virginia Tech loss to me was officially the honeymoon was over. You know, but now this is, now you're just married. And you know what? I mean, marriage is good sometimes. It's a pretty good marriage. And actually, it's my, uh, it's my 19th anniversary today. So, what? happy anniversary to my wife. And I'm spending it with these guys. I'm Sorry. in love, too. Uh, thank you for joining us this week for Ohio State Big Ten Show here on Cleveland.com, along with Ari Wasserman and Bill Landis. I'm Doug Lee Maurice, building up with our coverage all week until the Buckeyes host Rutgers at 3.30 on Saturday.